Hey, while we're talking, I know it's been a while since um, we've done anything, but I wanted to take the opportunity to get with my friend Adrian Sanford and uh, talk about one of our favorite preachers. And there's there's one thing um, I've noticed about preachers that I think are really good preachers is they love to listen to really good preaching. And uh, Adrian Sanford is one of those one of those guys that I think is an excellent preacher. He's preached for us on a number of occasions and has always blessed the congregation. And so we're excited to have you with us today. Well, man, I'm excited to be on. I have uh, always enjoyed watching uh, your videos on here. And so this is definitely a highlight of mine to be with you. Thank you, sir. And um, I will have uh, PayPal or uh, Cash App or whatever links uh, that uh, Evangelist Sanford has available for giving. If anyone would like to uh, support his ministry, he is a tremendous evangelist. And uh, I know it would be a blessing to him and his family if if any of you would feel the need to uh, support his ministry. That would be awesome. So uh, we are here today to talk about J.W. Arnold. Uncle Jay, Uncle Jeffrey. Godfather. Uh, do what? The Godfather. Yeah, the Godfather of preaching. Um, and the impact that he has had on uh, Pentecost, Pentecostal preaching, <clears throat> definitely a unique flavor and style of delivery that uh that was that was new whenever he broke onto the onto yeah. the preaching scene in Pentecost. Yeah, I mean, I've um, I've heard sermons that he's preached. I'm sure others have as well of how he would write his sermon notes on a napkin. Yeah. Or I've even heard him uh, make the reference at his home church in the past that he's preached numerous conferences with just a tiny piece of paper and about two or three scriptures. Yeah. And, uh, you know, preach an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And with so it was revelatory. It's definitely content. unique. Yeah, with a revelatory content. And right. um I wrote a I wrote a college paper about him a year or so ago. And I think we came up with the phrase revelatory preaching yes. in an attempt to describe Jeff Arnold. Uh he that's, is that's it, the only way to describe him. It's the only way to describe him. And not only the uh revelatory nuggets that he derives uh, from scripture and the connections that he makes between verses and concepts and ideas that that are all throughout scripture is just um fascinating but then his his brooklyn person that new york personality yeah and lingo that comes through he can be considered by some as very crass and rude and whatever right but i think that's what makes him jeff arnold that's right um I wouldn't yeah. want to hear him any other way. No, I mean, of course you go for the revelation he's going to bring. Uh, but, but the pizzazz doesn't you, hurt either. A part of you goes to see what he's going to say also. <laughs> exactly. See what so, he's going to say outside of scripture. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, pardon me for my congestion and stuff, but... So I guess the place that he's preached messages that have become the most watched, heard, well-known is at um, a conference in Alexandria, Louisiana called Because of the Times, or BOT for short. And right. man, he has preached he has preached messages at Because of the Times that has absolutely been pivotal. Uh, messages at very key points in my life. And I, I don't think I'm the only one that no. has that testimony. No, I, I grew up um, with parents who went to because of the times almost every year. And I remember them coming home. And if they were going to bring home back then VHS tapes of bot, yeah, uh, you could guarantee one of them would be Jeff Arnold's. Yeah. And so I grew up uh, listening to him almost extensively. <laughs> and of course, through the years, you know, technology has changed and now you can, you know, find almost anything on YouTube. Yeah. 
but yeah, he was definitely a staple of that conference and for several years uh, closed out the conference. Yeah. Uh, I, in my estimation, rightfully so. You know, yeah, absolutely. Just because of the impact that he had. And you knew uh, when he walked to that pulpit, he had a word from the Lord. A statement I've heard from the Lord, you knew that he had. I have heard from God. Yeah. <laughs> and you knew he did. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It was evident from from the uh, content to the from the passion and uh, just the change in the atmosphere when he began to communicate the word of the Lord that he had indeed heard from God. Now you yeah. are a you are a master of <laughs> Jeff Arnold bot quiz, and so. Yeah. What year did I, you I've, I've watched them a time or two? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was preaching for a friend of mine a number of years ago, and he put in some Jeff Arnold tapes, and I was just videos, and I was just sitting there saying the sermon right along with them because oh yeah, you you knew what was yeah, coming there's, next uh, yeah. So what year did because of, that I could do that? What year did uh, because of the time start? I think it was in eighty three. Yeah. And I, if I remember correctly, Jeff Arnold's first bot message was a formula for a cloudburst. Cloudburst. Yep. Formula for cloudburst. Yep. And in 84, um, you know, I don't even know if the sermon is still available to find online, but several years ago, I found it. The audio wasn't very well. But he preached in '84, uh, seeing through spiritual eyes. Yeah, and and that's one that is hardly ever mentioned, I guess, because it's not available. Um, but it was, you know, classic Jeff Arnold as well. I I've heard it, but it's been years and years and years yep. since I've heard it. But when I when I think of Jeff Arnold messages, there's probably about three that yeah that pop into my head immediately and that I is could probably I could probably name uh, miracle looking for a vessel yeah refuge from despair and coming out of the cave yeah well uh coming out of the cave I, I figured you would have said uh I will not die in my dilemma yeah that but, was awesome too but coming that would have been was great. that would have been four yeah <clears throat> But coming out of the cave was was incredible. Um, and what's crazy is he preached all three of those sermons within four or five years. Yeah. I mean, he was just churning them out every year. Yeah. And, of course, a reason to rejoice. And if we'll stop measuring the miracle, we'll start. And that one's a classic, yeah. too. Uh, Man, he worked that tape measure <laughs> through that he whole did. sermon like, like he was a professional he came, carpenter. He, he knew how to get the crowd's attention because he walks up there with a little brown paper sack. <laughs> kind of just sits on the platform. On the what I have in this bag. But I'll tell you another one that has uh, ministered to me as much, uh, if not more than the others, is, um, you know, in 91, he preached Refuge from Despair. Yeah. And I've heard him on... Um, uh, during interviews say that after he preached that he got home and I mean, he had cancellations left and right for that year. A refuge from despair should have been number four for me. Cause you're right. Um, but people thought, you know, he was going exactly. left liberal <laughs> because he preached grace. And, and to you be know. honest with you, whenever I first heard that message as a, um, teenager, yeah, I thought the exact same thing from the church culture that I was raised up in. I thought that was the biggest uh, bunch of sloppy agape I ever heard in my life. <laughs> but you know, he he was on record by saying he got home, and I mean, there's cancellations left and right. But then the next year, uh, to round out my point, was in '92. He came he came back, and he preached. Um, the greatest need in the world. I was just fixing to say that's an underrated. It's to be right with God. Yeah. That's an underrated so, message as well. He, 
he gave him the left hook in 91 and then he came back yeah, to the right, the right cross. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what you call balance. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there was about 30, 35 years where, you know, even my dad, me and my dad have talked about it. And my dad was, you know, he, he's evangelized for the UPC for, se for several years. And uh, he remembers when Brother Arnold kind of came on the scene and, you know, hearing him at camps and conferences. And he said, son, there was about 30, 35 years where, you know, he was almost untouchable. Yeah. As far as, you know, revelation and content. Oh, yeah. I, my my all-time favorite. And, of course, I have to exclude my father from any conversation about right. my all-time favorite preachers. That just, that's not fair. It don't, that don't right. count. But outside of my, my father, Jeff Arnold is definitely my all-time favorite preacher. Absolutely. Just his, <laughs> and this goes back to your, uh, one of your opening statements is his delivery is not, um, uh, I guess, preacher-esque, you know, as far as going yeah. by an outline. Yeah, it's not. He, he just gets up there and I mean, he just, you know, he made Read. a statement. He made a statement one year that bought, uh, I don't warm up. As soon as I start, I'm good. It's good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And he doesn't take time to build a foundation. I mean, he just comes out swinging. If you're going to go with me, you're going to have to start with me. Yeah, he starts hot. That's what he he said. starts hot. That's right. <laughs> and he does. As soon as I start, it's good. Yeah. He said, I'm about to hear my favorite preacher. Well, he, he, he said <laughs> numerous times that he's almost bought his own tape. So. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> some, of his, some of his classics, uh, classic lines while he's preaching is, hey, all of you up there in the cheap seats. Yeah, all of you doing the mannequin impersonation. Yeah. Said so all of you doing that statue impersonation, you better watch out the pigeons are circling. I tell you what, he he didn't give the preachers a nod off, that's for sure. <clears throat> no, all you baptized brains. <laughs> but you know, we, we we talk about all of his bot sermons and rightfully so. I mean, they're just <laughs> you know, uh, you know, like you said, miracle looking for a vessel and refuge from despair and come out of the cave and um even another one he you know in 99 he preached i will not die in my dilemma that's an awesome message too and he you know gave the testimony about his church trouble going through the building project and all that and uh and then in 2000 he came right back and he preached uh, to experience the dream you got to survive the nightmare yeah and, and that was a great one but um <laughs> There's a lot of things that he has preached at his home church through the years. Oh, yeah. I've gotten that teaching series that are, that, you know, off the just charts. Great. Yeah. His, uh, he taught a series on Abraham for he did ever, that 27 way. weeks. Yeah. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, the steps of that great faith. Yeah. I like, listened to every one of them. Do I? I said, I, I've listened to every one of them. Yeah, that's a phenomenal series. And and that is what people don't understand is that the kind of preaching and teaching that he gave to his local church was oh, like yeah. them getting to hear because of the times week in and week out. Right. And, and we do we do get accustomed to like the because of the times like atmosphere and fervor, but he's an incredible Bible teacher. He has the ability yeah. not only to preach at that level of high energy but he has the ability to get up and actually just take his time and teach the bible and it's it's incredibly phenomenal and, and a lot of people don't know that side of jeff no. um that that series was great he also taught one i think in 2016 i think i may have shared this with you sometime back uh a one this series and he called it Finding Christ in Christmas. Yeah. And uh, I think he taught it every Wednesday night during the month of December. And it's just, you know, of course, he starts out with John 1 and 1. And I mean, he just, you know, he spends 30, 40 minutes just on John 1 and 1. Yeah. And it, it was incredible as well. Yeah, just, so, just uh, an absolutely 
um, um, world changing ministry. And he's more than just a preacher. I think he was a pro. I think he's a prophet in a very biblical definition, not in the sense of prophesying um, future events, but a prophetic voice that spoke directly to the movement, directly to needs within the movement issues that needed to be addressed that a lot of people wouldn't a lot of ministries and preachers no. would not touch and he did it fearlessly he did it with without any fear or favor whatsoever and the refuge from despair message uh like i said when i first heard it i thought it was just the biggest mess of compromise i ever heard in my life but as yeah. i developed in my revelation of, of god and scripture and life I come to realize that yeah. man, that message was. Yeah, life will teach you a lot of things. That's for it sure. It sure will. It sure will. And, you know, as a young preacher, it's easy to to get cocky about a lot of stuff you think you know until, right. until life hits. And and that's one of those messages. That, that's one of those messages that has aged well for me because. Very well. Yeah, it's it's just absolutely phenomenal. And because of that, I think he might also hold the record for having been banned from the most districts in the UPC. <laughs> well, you know, he he never shied away from making that known either. Uh -uh. <laughs> he no. said, uh, I think he was preaching at Texas, one of their camp meetings a few years back. And, you know, classic Jeff Arnold. He said, you guys don't intimidate me. I've been thrown out of the best districts this movement has to offer. <laughs> 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 that's big, you know so i believe but, you know was, that you, you knew that that's what you were going to get and they came. knew it but they a lot of times yeah I mean, they knew it before they invited him to that it was likely to happen yeah you knew what you were signing up for and <laughs> i think it was illinois perhaps missouri where one night <laughs> he just turned the pulpit around backwards and preached to the district Preached to the district board for about an hour. Yeah. And, and, you know, and anybody else that would do that or would try to do that, they would be finished. Yeah. And, uh, but, which I guess they, you know, tried to <laughs> finish him too in certain districts, but he just kept coming back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But just, I mean, it's like you said, you know, he's, He's one of a kind, and uh, I, I've had the opportunity twice uh, to sit down and talk to him. Yeah. Um, he <laughs> preached our dedication service here in Mississippi for my home church uh, back in 2011, and uh, I had the unique um, responsibility, I guess, to pick him up from the airport. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm sitting there, and here he comes down the escalator you know he's got this button-up hawaiian shirt on yeah uh some wrinkled khakis and he's got this notebook hanging out of his front pocket yeah that he probably wrote you know three sermons on on the plane ride yeah and uh man it was it, it was amazing to see how he could you know go from just talking to somebody young like me uh to the time that i picked him up from the hotel for the service uh you could tell that the switch had been turned on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was, and, and he was in preacher mode when I picked him up. Oh, yeah. He was preaching to you all the way to the hotel. Oh man, I had, I got preached through for twenty five straight minutes. Yeah. And uh, and so I met him then, and then actually, uh, three or four weeks ago, I was in Florida, in revival in Leesburg, and uh, about an hour and fifteen minutes south of Gainesville. And I was able to meet him again for lunch at one of his favorite Italian places. Oh, I've been there. And, uh, and uh, you know, he's got to be pushing almost 80 now. Yeah. But. That mind of his is still 25. Man, I know he had a lot of health problems, you know, but that mind is, it's still sharp, man. It is. I just sat there and was like a sponge, yeah. you know, trying to take in as much as I could. I have a, I have a picture of him somewhere on my instagram of me and him uh together and he's in his one of those short sleeve one piece mechanic dickies outfits 
he actually had one of those on that day. I met him in Florida. Yeah. He had that on with an Israeli defense military jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the most eclectic. Yes. Guys, eccentric people but, at a personal level. But, man, he's – the impact he's had on people, man, it's just, yeah, you can't put a number on it. No, he was preaching at Daniel McDonald's anniversary service. We preached it together and, uh, it was fun. You did with him? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, he was preaching and he was getting on something and, uh, well, first of all, he turned to the, 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 uh, the presper and said, uh, he said, I don't know where we come up with that dumb junk. That ain't in the Bible. So there ain't no presbyters in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned to brother McDonald and said, you keep your check. I make millions. Yeah. I was a millionaire before I got here. Yeah. I was a millionaire before <laughs> I got here. <laughs> huh. He's like but, the Donald. He's like the Donald Trump of Pentecost. He don't need your money, so he's gonna say what he wants to say. Yeah, I mean, I've got a place to preach every week. I don't need you, you know. <laughs> but you know, through all of that, through yeah, the, there is a through, there is a kind, gentle, yes, like incredibly loving heart underneath all of that pizzazz and and yeah, you get through that Brooklynese. Yeah, you know, uh, personality that he has. I mean, you can tell when when he when he gets down to what he's preaching or talking yeah. about. Yeah, that there's a uh, there's a a real compassion and passion for you know, and probably the church the, and God's kingdom. And, oh, absolutely, and probably the one that reveals that the most is a refuge from despair. You yes. could just hear his heart for people. Yeah. Uh, in in that message and it's just yeah. it's phenomenal that, that's one of those sermons <clears throat> that you know he read in first john if our heart condemns us god is god greater than our heart and knows, all, knows things. all things i never read that verse the same way i've never read it the same way uh -huh. since i've heard him preach that yeah and it it's just it's just locked in my mind every time I read it or think about it, that whole sermon comes back. Yeah. Refuge from despair is one of those messages that absolutely everybody, everybody needs to hear. Yeah. yeah. I am persuaded is a good one. It is. I'm not an Egyptian. Wasn't because of the times, but that was, no, it was good. And I'll tell you another one. And this goes back to his home church, hearing him every week. Um, I found one several months ago that he preached either in 2003 or four in January, kind of as a catalyst for that year for the church. Yeah. And he preached, um, our dreams must be greater than our memories. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it was just, and I'm sitting there listening to this and I'm like, this is a Sunday morning at his home church. Yeah. And, and, and this is the content that they're getting, you know, and it was that church it was is definitely that de that church is definitely spoiled to um, highest yep. level preaching and teaching, right? Uh, and uh, I never I never preached there, but I I could only imagine how intimidating it would have been to to try to preach in that pulpit, uh, knowing the kind of yeah content and quality of content you know. For, they, you know almost 40 years, however long it was he pastored, you know, until he turned it over. Um, and, and he's, and he's made, uh, statements that, you know, he didn't counsel much. He didn't, uh, he didn't meet with a lot of people out of his church. He said, I felt like my responsibility was to pray and study. Yeah. Pray and, study. and, uh, and he's also said that he has, you know, he's never really had a lot of hobbies. Um, at one time he, he liked to restore old cars, Yeah, but he said, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of close friends. I didn't have a lot of hobbies. Um, I just prayed and studied. So his, his life has been yeah scripture. And when, when he, 
when he preaches the Bible, you you can tell that he has an intimate relationship with that book. Yeah. And he he's best friends with that book. Right. Um there was a uh, and I can't think of the the uh the gentleman's name, but he done a Barnabas blog for years. I think he's a a, a minister in the UPC. He is. And he would and he would go and interview, you know, uh, uh, certain preachers. He interviewed um uh Scott Graham, uh J. H. Osborne. I think he interviewed like Ben Weeks and uh Doug Watt. But he he went to Gainesville and interviewed uh, Brother Arnold. Yeah. And Brother Arnold basically said, you know, same thing that I just told you. You know, I pray and study. And uh, he had two or three spots in Gainesville that he would go to every day. Yeah. He'd go to Dickie's Barbecue. He'd go to that Italian place. And um, he said he'd sit in his little booth. And, you know, for an hour or two hours there, he would read and study. And um, that was just his life. And and when he walks in that when he walks in that Italian restaurant, he's everybody in there bows down to him like he's the oh yeah yeah I, I realized president. that I realized that a few weeks ago when I met him there. I mean, the owner came by two or three times and checked on him. Uh, two or three waiters and waitresses came by and made sure he had whatever he needed. Yeah, and, uh, his, his impact has gone far beyond just the church and the pulpit. Yeah. And uh, it's like you said, well, he's almost the godfather of Pentecost. He is. He is. He, uh, man, it's just, and the the amount of guys that have preached his sermons word for word and not given him credit for them is, is yeah. amazing too. Well, that's hard to do nowadays, especially. It is, but it's still done. There's there's one that preached uh, Miracle Looking for a Vessel, and it's on YouTube. Yeah, use the pizza box and everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, man, you got to know that Jeff Arnold's, not just Pentecostals, man, there's there's people that watch Jeff Arnold. Oh, yeah, and especially from every not, denomination. Exactly. So his influence goes well beyond, especially just oneness Pentecostalism. It goes absolutely well beyond the UPC, well beyond oneness Pentecostalism. It goes into to yeah. every facet of, of of Christianity. It's it's amazing. I heard, and it relates to that gentleman you just said that preached the sermon. I heard that one of the more prominent uh, Christian pastors for years would call Jeff Arnold's secretary every January yeah, and order every sermon that he preached the year before. Yeah. And would listen to it, study it, you know, and preach it and preach it. But, you know, I, I can't say I blame him, you know, if you're going to uh, hey, rip somebody off, you might as well rip off the best. Somebody that's very good. Hey, if you're going to steal, steal from the best. If you're going to do it, do it right. That's all I can say. Well, um, because I don't have the uh, full uh, Zoom package, our interview is going to have to end in nine and a half minutes. So, okay, we're going to have to uh, start finding the land in the street. Yeah, yeah, kind of find a place to land. By the way, your house looks amazing. I'm thankful oh. that the Lord bless you with a beautiful Thank you, sir. house. It was uh, quite a project for what a couple of years. Uh, it took about as far as building about nine months. Okay. Um, now of course the entire you know picking out plans and and all that it was year and a half probably almost two years, but uh, so Lord's what been is good. Lord's been good to us. Yes, He has. So, what's the best way to reach you if someone wants to schedule you to preach a revival? Um, uh, of course I'm on, I'm on social media, Facebook, yeah. Twitter, uh, Adrian Sanford, uh, they can is my, is my Twitter handle. Um, and then my name of course for Facebook and uh, people can message you on Facebook. 
they can. And, awesome. uh, and, uh, of course, you can always if you know me and you want to get a hold of him. You can get a hold of me and I'll give you his phone number. <laughs> You'll be my booking agent. That's right. I only, I only take, uh, uh, 10% after you've been paid and tithed to your home church. And then I'll take okay. another 10% for all the revivals I book for you. Well, you know what you get on that? We, we can make that happen, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I have seriously done that for people before that's hooked. Yep. I've sent them, I've sent them a, well, you've a cut. You've, uh, you've definitely, I've been preaching for several years and you, you know, several circles and, uh, you, do you want to share the funny story of how you and I met? Uh, yeah. So um, you were at brother. Or, or I could share it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was, um, I was preaching that you service at brother Garza's church in, uh, Zanesville, Ohio, I yeah. guess probably five or six years ago now. Yeah. And uh, now to preface this, um, you've already mentioned that, you know, I love listening to preaching. And um, and so I'd heard you on audio several yeah. times through the years. Yeah, I would heard I'd heard your your oneness sermons. I'd heard your uh, even some of your debates. I'd um, I'd heard you preach. We are the church. Um, you're going to serve somebody. Um which those are sermons that are worth stealing. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so I'd heard you on audio. I'd never seen your face. Didn't know what you looked like. Yeah. And so you came to that youth service that I was preaching to Brother Garza's. Yeah. And so he has all the ministers stand up. And of course he says, Brother Carol, but it never, you know, light bulb doesn't go off. Yeah. And so long story short, we go out to eat after church. You come. Was it at IHOP or somewhere? It, it was at IHOP. And the more you're talking, it's like the light's slowly coming on. Like a dimmer you know, switch. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it took me a minute. And finally, I just stop and say, wait a minute, are you the John Carroll from Louisiana? Yeah. And, and man, you just busted out laughing. And I said, <laughs> I said, well, it's nice to meet you. I've heard you preach for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so it, awesome. I, I felt like an idiot. No, that's but, awesome. But man, it I'm glad we met and we Yeah, me too. We've uh we've stayed in contact ever since. You preached our one year anniversary service last year. I did. And that was awesome. And uh and and you've got a uh a more permanent building now, right? Uh more permanent, but still not as we're still looking for something right. as, as well, but a lot of permanent like to we've be. added we've added probably four families since we've been in this new building that right uh and got out of the hotel so yeah well man thank well, you man, so much for, thank you so much for taking the time uh to absolutely uh come on and talk about jeff arnold i don't i don't want his memory to die i don't want his ministry no. to die it's not going to, and I know I'm not going to be the one to keep it alive. It's going to do that on its own merits, but maybe someone will watch this and and Absolutely. go check out some of those messages on uh, YouTube from Because of the Times and uh, what he's preached is timeless, and there's always going to be somebody that's going to need a refuge from despair. I, I go back and listen to it probably every three or four months. Yep. And, because uh, it, it's that relevant today. Yeah, I thank God for his ministry. I appreciate your friendship, and uh, thank you for taking the time to do this today. Yes, sir. All righty.